In this video, I'm going to show you how to mix up Photographer's Formulary TF4 Rapid Fixer. Um, TF4 is a unique rapid fixer because unlike most of them, like the ones made by Ilford and Kodak, the TF4 fixer is an alkaline fixer. Other fixers are acidic, and an alkaline fixer is useful if you're developing film using staining developers like PMK because um, an acidic fixer will actually reduce the image stain that you get from those developers. A lot of people like to use it also for ordinary developers as well because it's claimed that the washing times are shorter with the alkaline fixer. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's the claim the manufacturer makes. And I do a lot of work with PMK, which is why I use it. And it's, a, it's a pretty good fixer all around anyway, so I just use it for all of my work regardless of which developer I'm using. Now the reason we have to have a special lesson on how to mix this is that this fixer is unique in the way that it's prepared. Most rapid fixers, if you buy the Ilford stuff or the Kodak rapid fixer, you get a bottle of clear liquid and you dilute it with water to make the working strength solution. Um, the Kodak stuff I know is diluted 1 to 3, I think the Ilford stuff is 1 to 4. Um, whatever, whatever the dilution is, you, you measure out however much of the concentrate you want to go into the right amount of water to get the final amount of working strength fixer that you want. And so with those you don't necessarily have to mix the entire bottle of it at once. If you buy a bottle of it that's big enough to make a gallon of working strength, if you don't want that much, you can always measure out a smaller amount of the concentrate and mix with the appropriate amount of water to get the amount that you need. You can't, but you can't do that with the TF4 fixer. And the reason why is because the solution with the TF4 fixer, the concentrate that you buy, um, is what they call a super saturated um, solution. In other words, all the chemicals that go into the fixer, because fixer is made of several different chemicals that are all mixed into the water, the chemicals are all powdered chemicals. They're solids that have to be dissolved in water. And with most rapid fixers, when they're dissolved into the amount of water to make the concentrate, they're completely dissolved. You don't see any, any solid stuff floating around inside the concentrate with the Kodak or Ilford rapid fixer. That's not the case with the TF4 fixer. The TF4 fixer has so much of the chemicals put into the concentrate water that it doesn't all dissolve. There's actually too much for it to dissolve in the small amount of water. And the bottle I've got here is a quart-sized bottle or a liter-sized bottle. You have one liter, it says. And this one that's diluted will make one gallon of working strength fixer. Now, I don't know how easy it is to see on here, but if you look at the top of the bottle, you can see the clear liquid here. And then um, at the bottom, it's, you can't see through it because it's opaque. And that's because the chemicals that are inside um, are basically uh, white powder that's in here. And the problem with that is, is that if you wanted to make a smaller amount of this, you couldn't just pour off a smaller amount of the concentrate to use because you have to make sure that all these chemicals are dissolved in the water when you pour it off. And just uh, even if you were to shake it up and get it all where it looks like it's evenly dispersed through the bottle, you might not have all the different chemicals that go into the fixer evenly dispersed through the whole thing. So if you pour off only a small amount, you may be missing some essential ingredients in your final working strength solution that you make from that. And because of that problem, you, you've got to mix the entire amount all at once. So this is, a, this is an amount that's designed to make a gallon. So we have to make our complete gallon all at once. And that in itself seems simple enough, but you need to make sure that you have all of this um, solid that's inside the bottle here um, is used because when you pour this out a lot of this solid stuff is going to stick inside the bottle and so it's important to get it all rinsed out of there that you have all of it in your final um, working strength fixer solution and so what we're going to do we're going to take a uh, large graduate this one can do uh, more than a gallon it's a five liter size graduate and we're going to use distilled water um, you can use tap water for this stuff, but I prefer to use distilled for mixing all of my chemicals because tap water in some parts of the country isn't very consistent in its quality. Um, I know that the tap water where I live here in Fort Wayne, Indiana, there are times when it smells very strongly of chlorine. There's other times it doesn't. Um, anything that's in the water is going to affect the working properties of your chemicals, and so I find it better just to use distilled water for making all this stuff. And it's not very expensive. This stuff costs a dollar a gallon of Kroger, so it wasn't a big deal. Um, I've got a stain on my on my gloves there. Also, you should wear protective gloves when you handle this stuff. 
it's not particularly toxic. Um, it's not going to kill you if it gets on your skin, but um, a lot of people find that Fixer irritates their skin, and I'm one of them. It'll make me break out in a rash. And I figure anything that can do that to you has potential side effects beyond that, so it's better to be safe and protect yourself. What we're going to do is, um, I'm going to take my stirring thing out of here so we can measure accurately. Make sure all the water is poured out of this, because I rinsed this with water before I started the video to make sure it was clean inside. The first thing I wanted to do is open up the uh, bottle from Photographer's Formulary. And this doesn't have a seal inside like it used to in the past. They've changed their bottle design. The older bottles had a narrower top. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pour everything that's in here into my measuring graduate. If you shake it up before you pour it out, that makes it easier to get all that lit or all that solid out of it. And I did that a little bit when I was demonstrating a minute ago. But you can see as the solid is plopping out of there, it's kind of splashing a bit. So you need to be careful not to splash this on yourself. Now, when I look inside the bottle here, this is actually pretty clean inside. In the past when I used this, because it had, the, the old bottles had a much narrower top, this stuff just wouldn't all come out, and I had to end up rinsing it out with multiple rinses of water to get everything out. Most of the, most of the uh, solid, and I'm not sure if I can show you this on the video, if it'll really show through or not, but I think you can see in there some of the, there's still a little bit of the solid down at the bottom. But this isn't nearly as much as there would have been in the past with the old bottle, so this is a lot easier. Now, in order to get all this out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of my distilled water that I'm using to mix up the final amount of it to rinse out the solid. Because if you look at our graduate here, we've got about one liter, which is how much was in the concentrate bottle. But we need to have 3.8 liters, which is one gallon. That's where my blue line is here. So we can use some of our distilled water to rinse out the concentrate bottle and make sure we got all that solid out of there. And we'll still have plenty of room left in here to add more water to make the final amount. What I'm going to do, and normally I would do this over the sink so that I don't spill it on the floor, but I'm going to, I'm going to fill this up part way with water. Now I don't want to fill it up all the way, and the reason why is because I'm going to put the lid back on it. Make sure it's nice and tight so I don't get myself wet. I'm going to shake it up and use the water I poured in there to dislodge some of that solid. And if you look in here, I don't, I don't know how well it'll show in the video, but most of the solid has been dislodged from the bottom of this, so this may be all that's necessary to get it out. I know with the older bottle design, I had to do this four or five times to get all of it out of there. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour it back out into our measuring graduate. And once we're done with that, I'll stick my eyes in here and take a look. And there is still a little bit of the solid left in there, so we need to do this again. Oops, wrong lid. The distilled water lid will definitely not fit on the bottle for the fixer. And it looks like now I don't see any of it still stuck inside the bottle, so let's go ahead and pour it out and see if there's any left once we do this. And that's it. It's clean. So we've got all of our, we've got all of our fixer concentrate and all of our solid out of there, just like we need. And if we look at our measuring graduate, it's not 
high enough, so we need to add more water to make up the full amount of this. Okay, now here's our measuring graduate, and you can see it's partway full here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my stirring rod out because that will affect the accuracy of the measurements if that's taking up some of the space. Now we're going to use our distilled water here and I'm going to pour distilled water into here until it has reached our our full point which I've got a little blue line written there with a sharpie marker and I think that's kind of hard to see but that's where we're going to fill it to. That's our one gallon mark. Okay, I've got it filled up to the gallon mark now. Um, the next thing we need to do is we need to stir it up because some of that solid is still in there and you can see the solution is pretty milky. It should look pretty clear by the time everything is dissolved. So I'm going to take our stirring rod here and stir it up. A lot of times you'll see some of the solid accumulating on the bottom once it starts clearing up and you just have to keep stirring it until all that is gone. And you'll notice a smell to it. This has got kind of a strong ammonia smell to it. I don't think it's as nasty as the smell from the from the acid fixers, but it does still have a strong odor to it. It's something you definitely want to work with in a well ventilated space. Now this can take a little time to mix. It takes about five minutes or so of mixing it to get it clear. But you can see the solution is already starting to clear up. It's starting to get more transparent. And I don't see any solution or any solids sitting in the bottom of it. But it does need to be stirred some more because it's not perfectly clear yet. So I'm going to go ahead and stir it. And I'm not going to make you um, watch the video the whole time I'm doing that. So we'll go ahead and skip ahead to when it's done. I've been stirring for a few minutes and it's cleared up quite a bit. There's no more solid left in it, but it is still a little bit milky. I'm going to let it sit for a few minutes and let it clear up because it'll typically do that if you let it sit for a little while. And once it's gotten cleared up, I'll stir it just a bit more and then pour it into our pour it into our storage jug back there. Now, one thing I want to note about this um, chemical that I didn't mention at the beginning uh, is that like it like a uh, um, like most chemicals that come as a liquid, this can be made. This can be mixed up at room temperature. Unlike powdered chemicals like D76 or Codex powder fixer, you can mix this at room temperature. So you don't have to use heated up water, which makes it really easy. I just took the distilled water jug that was you know sitting at room temperature here and used it, and everything is has mixed up well. Um, it looks like it's actually getting a bit clearer even as we're talking. You see it's still got a little bit of a milkiness to it that's floating around in there as we stir it, so it takes a little, it's going to take a little bit more time. Usually, even after I get this stuff mixed up where it's clear enough that I can put it into the, into the storage jug, I'll let it sit overnight just to be sure everything is fully dissolved before I actually use it. Um, some people think that's not necessary, but I've always done it as a precaution anyway. And I think we're getting pretty close to the time when I can put it away. You can see it's it's starting to get very clear now. You can see the mixing paddle really well through it. See from the top, it's still a little bit milky. It should be it should be very clear when it's done. So I'm going to let it sit for just a few more minutes, and then I'll go ahead and pour it into the jug. But um, as far as that goes, I think our lesson is finished. Um, as I said, I let it sit overnight before I use it, and then you should be ready to go. It works just like any other rapid fixer, same, same fixing times and everything.